good morning dear students good morning to all of you good morning Harvey, you just check up. Uh, she has joined, uh, Madam uh, Guest. Not a join, ma'am.
Pavish has joined, huh? you just check up. I'm not a joined, ma'am. I called her, she said she'll join exactly by 10 o'clock. Yeah, I searched her name, but uh, she's not a joined, ma'am.
Well, she is just joining, ma'am. I called her again. Okay, ma'am.
good morning am i audible good morning ma'am you are audible ma'am welcome ma'am yeah yeah thank you there's a network issue morning, i don't madam. know what yeah. good morning madam uh, good morning welcome madam welcome yeah we can start right away ah oh, okay ma'am Good morning. Maria, you can start. Uh -huh. Good morning, all. I would like to welcome everyone for the Zoom meet. Knowledge and education are the basis for all things that can be accomplished in life. Teachers provide the power of education to today's youth, thereby giving them the possibility of better future. To light up this session, I would like to call upon Mrs. J. Vigneshwari, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Pr Faculty of Education, to deliver the welcome address. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Sheila. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yeah. Thank you. Every morning is destiny's way of telling you that your purpose in life is yet to be fulfilled. With this note, a very happy morning to one and all present here for this guest lecture on the topic, Effective Methods of Teaching English Grammar. On behalf of Faculty of Education, Dr. MGR Education Research Institute, I extend our gracious welcome and inclusive welcome to all who have joined in this virtual portal. We would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to Honorable President and all the executives for their encouragement and support to provide and or to organize this event. With tremendous pleasure, we would like to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Usha Sadasivam, Head, Department of English, Meenakshi College of Women, Chennai. Hearty welcome to you, ma'am. Also, we would like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. K. Geeta, Principal, Faculty of Education, for initiating this program. Hearty welcome to you, ma'am. And we are best out to welcome all the faculty members, without students, and all the participants for this guest lecture. Once again, a congenial welcome to one and all present here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. A philosopher once said, off of good philosophy is good grammar. I would request Dr. Sintamil Pavey, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Education, to introduce the resource person, Dr. Usha Sadasivam, ma'am, for the session. Thank you, Sheila. It's my pleasure, more than an honor, to introduce the resource person of today's session, Dr. Usha Sadasivan, head, Department of English, Minakshi College for Women. Women. She, has a doc, uh, she has completed her master degree in English literature as well as in mass communication and journalism. She also completed her doctorate in English language teaching from University of Madras. She was earlier head English department at the MOP Vaishnava College for Women. She has over 25 years of teaching experience at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. She has presented papers at several national and international conferences and has also been chairperson for a few international conferences. She has published 22 articles in reputed peer reviewed journals, 16 articles in journals with ISS and ISBN numbers, and six articles in Scopus Index journals. She is the editor of Meenakshi College Newsletter, member of the Lions Club International Science in 2007. To add a feather on her cap, she has been awarded the International President Achievement Award, Milestone Chevron Award, and Best Senior Faculty Award by Novel Research Academy. She is truly remarkable workaholic and an ideal professor. It is a pleasure of mine to invite you to host the session on effective methods of teaching English grammar. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you, ma'am, to enhance our students' virtual learning. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly accept our virtual book, eh, ma'am. Thank you very much. Can we uh, start right away? Ah, yeah, ma'am. Ma slide, slide. Uh, I'll. Uh, Madam, we have a virtual bouquet. Kindly accept as a yeah. token of love. Thank you. It's so beautiful. As beautiful as all of you people are. And I love the 
uh, introduction. Only I got held up uh, a few day, minutes because of this uh, technology issue. Uh, yes, uh, I would be uh, presenting uh, uh, a PPT from my end. So can I uh, proceed with that? Do you need to allow me to share screen or I can just share screen? You can also share your screen, ma'am. I have given co-host permission to you. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. It's visible, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, so this is uh, this is a journey. Okay. This is not a guest lecture. I would call this as a journey, where we are traveling together. We are trying to understand how we can teach English grammar in a more interesting manner, because this is one bugbear which all teachers face. We wonder how can we teach English grammar. Now I would like to go to the slideshow. Yes. Now uh, these are the common uh, definitions which one uh, which we would come across. Uh, this is what Google has told about uh, grammar. Grammar is the system and structure of a language consisting of syntax, morphology, phonology, and semantics. Now, uh, just a short look at what these words mean. We have to start uh, with a proper definition. So that is why I've started with the definition. So what are these four important aspects of grammar? What is syntax? What is morphology? What is phonology? What is semantics? Now, this again uh, is, is what you all know, but, but you need to recall again. Syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases in a sentence. Morphology is the study of these words, how they are formed, what are the root words, what are stem words, what are prefixes, what are suffixes. And phonology is the sounds in the language, the sounds that is meaningful sounds in the language. Semantics is the study of meaning. So these are the four aspects of grammar which you need to master in order to understand language better. Now, there are two common approaches to teaching grammar. One is the inductive approach, which is the better approach. And then you have the deductive approach. In the inductive approach, we just give you as examples of gram examples of language. You listen and you figure out in your mind itself, like, is this right? Is this appropriate? And then slowly you master the, uh, the structure of that language. So that is the better. And one example of that would be how we learned our mother tongue. Nobody taught us grammar. We learned it just by knowing and by saying it wrong and then correcting ourselves. So that is inductive approach. And then you have the deductive approach, which is how if you were to learn French, you, they will start teaching you from the grammar. They will tell you this is a pattern. These are the words which you, which you should be used. This is how you should pronounce it. And that is how you learn that language. So both languages have been proved successful, but the better approach would be the inductive approach. But English is our second language. It is not our mother tongue. So we would, be, uh, we would have to go do a lot of deductive teaching of grammar in order for them to know which is the better, how to better speak that language. Now, this is just a short uh, uh, example of how when you teach a, a rule in English, there is always an exception. 
So this is an example. So when I was young, life was very simple. So they told add one S, then it becomes a plural. So voice was voices, choice became choices, and plurals were very easy. And then afterwards, everything becomes a mess. You say mouse becomes mice, moose is in mooses, die is not, die becomes dies. So it's so random. And how many exceptions are there? So it's just a fun way of telling how grammar is not as simple as it seems. Now for the next uh, half an hour or so, we are going to talk about, I'm going to demystify grammar to you in seven easy steps. Okay, so we're going to do it like in uh, grammar can be taught through activities. That's the best way of teaching grammar. Grammar has to be made as interesting as possible because the word grammar itself is uh, gives the impression that it is very tough. So one thing, the step one would be grammar is everywhere. You don't have to go looking for a grammar uh, textbook. You don't have to be looking for, uh, you know, uh, anything very difficult. So where is grammar? We have to search for it. We have to discover it. So now I'm going to give you a small passage from a storybook. And it's nothing more interesting than selecting a storybook, which is for children. And then we, we ask them, uh, most of you would be going probably, uh, I assume I'm ad addressing uh, students, be it students who are soon going to be teaching uh, in schools or colleges. So, uh, so when you give a passage, you give them something which is simple. There is no need to go for something very, very complicated. And then you ask them uh, to uh, read it, see which are the important words and why they think those words are important. So step one is grammar is everywhere. Now I would just show you a small passage from, this is a storybook from uh, an Enid Blyton storybook. So it's, it's just an excerpt from that. So it's such a lovely day. You can take your lesson books onto the hillside if you like, said mummy one morning to Jill and Robert. So out they went. What have you got to do? Robert asked Jill. I've got to learn how to spell six words, said Jill. They're rather hard. Here they are. M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M. -O -O and then toadstool and honey, dewdrop, magic and enchantment. Don't you think they're hard, Robert? Yes, said Robert. I'm sure I don't know how to spell them. I have to learn my seven times tables. And then they sit there to study. And first a lovely peacock butterfly flew by, then a tiny copper beetle with a shining back ran over Jill's book. Then a robin came and sat so new to the, near to them that they hardly dared to move in case he was frightened away. I say, Jill, said Robert at last, how much work have you done? None, said Jill. So this is a passage which they have to read once. You don't tell them anything after that. Okay, just let them just read it. So this is an Enid Blyton uh, story for children. Now you tell them what are nouns, what are adjectives, what are adverbs, what are verbs. So you all know what are nouns is a name of something, a name of a person, place, thing. And then adjective is some word which describes that person, place or thing. Then an adverb tells you what that person, place or thing is doing. And a verb is the, the word, the action word. So what is, are they sitting, they're standing, they're laughing. So once you tell them, these are things you should tell them after they read the passage once. So now you go back to that passage and tell them, now you know what's a noun. You know it's an adjective is something which describes that noun. An adverb is something which tells you what that noun is doing. And a verb is something which tells you the exact word. What are they doing? So now you go back, uh, one minute. Yeah, so now we go back to that slide. So now you read it again, they read it again, and then they see which are the words, which is, uh, who are the people being spoken about. Then you have Robert, you have Jill, uh, you have mummy. So those are the nouns. About the, then you have 
table, book. So these are things which you know now are the naming words. Then the adjectives. So what? So you see, uh, it says about the the homework. They say it is rather hard. So this is qualifying the verb, right? So that is an adverb. Then she says seven times table. So seven is a number. Sometimes number is an adjective. Then flew by, the butterfly flew by. So that's a verb. They sat near them. So sat is a verb. So always make grammar as elementary and simple as possible so that uh, the children feel, oh, grammar, so easy. Okay, so that's the main thing. You have to make them think grammar is easy. Only then they will, you know, take interest in that subject. Never make it complicated. So now this is the first step that you uh, saw, that is grammar is everywhere. Now step two, you read and comprehend. So read aloud a passage from a book that is easy to understand. So just start collecting material which are simple and easy to understand. So whenever you read something which is interesting, just put it into a you know, small folder. And now that you are all tech savvy, I'm sure you can open a folder and put everything into your a word folder. So now you go again. I'm selecting a passage which, uh, which is interesting and which is simple. So do not tell them any meanings. They should read and try to comprehend as much as possible from the text itself. So now I've selected a passage from Alice in Wonderland. So this is the passage. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? So she was considering in her own mind and also she felt very sleepy and stupid. Whether the picture of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies. When suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that. Nor did Alice think it was so much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a rather rabbit hole, a large rabbit hole under the hedge. So this is a passage you just give them to read. Probably, uh, you know, they could write it down or take a copy of it and keep. Now, after this, you notice you can actually understand uh, it is not exactly a children's story book. There's so much more to it. There's so, uh, then they wonder, what is this word wonderland? Then, uh, you know, they start wondering, okay, it may be some magic, maybe wonderland. Something is something very different. So there are difficult words there, like, uh, you know, uh, words like considering. Then they wonder, what is this word daisy chain? Oh, daisy is a flower. So chain must be something which we're, you know, uh, tying those flowers together. And then uh, teaching idioms especially is very, very difficult. It's something, you know, the more you read of the language, that is when you understand. So there are so many idioms here. She was burning with curiosity. It flashed across her mind. Okay, so this, uh, this, this, the more they read, the more that is native English literature, that is when they really come to understand and comprehend what are, you know, these uh, nuances of English, which is idioms. So uh, 
second uh, step again would be read and comprehend. Now, step three, this is the awareness of possibilities. So where do you go looking for uh, things you can use in your grammar text, in your grammar lesson? Use realia. Now, realia is something which you can find in your around you. Use whatever resources are available on hand. And most children listen to me. So a lyric of a song can be used to teach tenses. So now this is, I go into one very simple song, which everybody knows that Santa Claus is coming to town. That's how it goes. It's a very nice tune. And who knows, and who would believe that you can actually use a Christmas carol, a Christmas song to teach grammar. So you can ask them to collect a Christmas song and come and then tell them, okay, let's, let's use Let's see what can we can make out of it. We can learn vocabulary. We can learn grammar. So here, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He is going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. And he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. So can you believe you can actually use this to teach the present continuous tense? I'm telling you. You know what's present continuous? Where the action is still continuing. So I tell you is simple i'm telling you uh, santa claus is coming he is making he is checking you are sleeping so these are things where the action is actually happening and uh, once they know that they are they are learning grammar from a nice song which they've al always been listening to or singing they, they will like uh, oh grammar is fun so this is one thing you are putting into the children's your students mind that grammar is not boring grammar is fun so this is songs to teach tenses this is another song which is uh, from the title itself you know it is the past tense the song name itself is and she was you know that was is past tense so this is a song by talking heads and uh, a band she was lying in the grass and she could hear the highway breathing and she could see a nearby factory. She is making sure she is not dreaming. See the lights of a near neighbor's house. Now she's starting to rise. See here again, you have present continuous. She opens up her eyes. The world was moving and she was right there. The world was moving and she was floating. And she was, and she was. So this is another song. You could give them two examples like this and ask the students to come up with, uh, you know, a rhyme or something and then make them itself to understand what are the grammar, uh, you know, aspects they can teach from that. So that would be very interesting because it is a project which they would love to do. And you could ask them to sing it also. So with music, you are actually teaching them grammar. So this is another interesting way of teaching grammar. So we have come to the step three. Now we move on to step four, make a connection. So the student has to be connected to the lesson. Grammar text should not be outside their experience. So give the activity, whatever activity you you are planning to do in your grammar class, give it a personal touch. Don't tell them it is a grammar class. That is enough to make it boring. So just say, we are going to have fun. We are going to have an activity. So this is one activity. Now you draw, ask each, any child to come across to the board and say, what were you doing 10 years ago? And the child will say, I was in 
fourth standard. I was in eighth standard. So they write it on the board. Next child comes up and says, what are you doing now? Now I am studying in college. Now I am a student in uh, MGR University. So that is the present. What will you do after two years? After two years, I will be teaching in a very good school. After two years, I will be doing my post-graduation. So all three sentences, you could probably have three columns on the board. And after that, you just read it. And then you know, and then you tell them, see, what you did 10 years ago is the past tense. What you're doing now is the present, present continuous. And what you're doing after two years is going to be the future tense. So, uh, so they realize they have been learning grammar unconsciously. And at the same time, they're speaking about themselves. And nothing is more exciting than speaking about yourself. And students love it when teachers ask them about themselves. So that's step four, you make a connection. Step five is make it contextual. Contextual is relating to whatever is happening in the current situation. So you ask them, don't ask them to write an essay about the First World War or write about, uh, say, nuclear warfare. You ask them to write, what did you do the weekend? If it's a, especially if it's a Monday. What did, how did you spend your weekend? Just write it. So whatever she writes, or maybe you can make it like a chain story. So student one writes, say, yesterday on Friday night, I had gone to the mall. Then she passes the, uh, or she writes it on the board. Then student two will go and write the second sentence. She will say, it was very crowded. Then student three must add to that. There were lots of children running around. The student four will write, it started raining outside. So it's like, you know, it's a, a connected story. And then at the end of it all, once the, uh, your board, your blackboard is filled, so it's use the blackboard and chalk to the maximum. It is never out of fashion. Though we start with online classes and you have all sorts of, and I will be giving you some web resources also to teach grammar. Nothing is more effective than an interactive classroom where you have face-to-face -face interaction with your students and use the blackboard to the maximum. So this is one way where students come and write out what they did in the weekend. Each one writes a sentence, you know, a linking sentence. And then one person will read it out. As they read, you can ask people to, you know, change things there, you know, erase things, add words. So it becomes their own story. So at the end of, uh, uh, you know, that half an hour or one hour, they are so happy that they've actually uh, written their own story. So each one can connect to what is written there. So once again, grammar becomes interesting and fun. So you have made it contextual and related to that particular group of students. Now, step six, activate and create. That is, use, the, use one activity to teach more than one grammar item. Teach them uh, appropriate language. You can teach them etiquette. You can teach them culture. But use what you have and, you know, activate it. Use your creativity there. So some examples I've used here are jumbled sentences or dangling modifiers. Dangling modifiers is great fun, you know, because people don't realize that they are using sentences, how it should not be used. So just give them a statement like this. If I was dash, 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 I would dash, dash, and give them these examples. If I was married, I would go abroad. If I was married, I would be more responsible. You ask them to understand and say which would be more appropriate. Uh, I thought if uh, this was more interactive, you could chat, you could type it in your chat box. But I don't know if that uh, would uh, 
disturb the class a bit? Is it possible? Is it possible for some of you to? I cannot see the chat box right here. Dear students, you can also uh, uh, chat in box and you can unmute your mic and can speak also. Yes, would somebody tell me uh, of these two, which is more appropriate? A or B? I think, uh, yeah, one person has uh, so far. Jaffrin has said B is more appropriate. Yeah, you're right, Jaffrin. So uh, then you have to discuss like uh, why. Both are right grammatically. But, uh, you know, appropriacy means you would say if I was married, I would go abroad. No, you can go abroad even without being married. If I was married, I would be more responsible. Seems more appropriate because, you know, you have to take care of uh, a family. Uh, you know, you have to become more responsible. So here, uh, B becomes more, uh, you know, appropriate. So this would, uh, you know, you can have a debate also in the classroom uh, saying, why is it that so that if you're married, you become responsible. Unmarried people, are, are they not responsible? Do they not take care of their family? Then you can, you know, immediately have a, a flash. This is called flash discussions, flash debate. A flash means on, on the spot. So just draw, take the blackboard, draw a column, column A, column B. Why do you say B is right? I don't agree to that. I am not married. I am responsible. Like that, you know, you can have fun in the class. And they do not realize that they are learning anything to do with grammar or, you know, like I told you, never mention grammar. I think you should remove that word from the timetable. It should not be written as grammar class. Probably call it as a fun class or an activity class or, uh, you know, language is fun class, something. Don't use the word grammar because it is something, uh, you know, which connotes the connotative meaning itself is like boring, difficult. Okay, so this is one uh, activity. Next one I told you would be, uh, yeah, yeah, this is a dangling modifier. So today I saw a man riding a bicycle with a broken leg. So if you don't put the comma in the right place, it gives a very wrong meaning. So today I saw a man, comma, Riding a bicycle, comma, with a broken leg. Now, who is having the broken leg, the bicycle or the man? So it is a, you know, this addition of that word with a broken leg, that broken leg should be next to the man. Today, I saw a man with a broken leg, comma, riding a bicycle. So a modifier has to be placed next to the person it is supposed to be modified. So after you write, you know, you always be careful, especially when you add on things, make it more complicated. Don't use very, very long sentences. It's only when you use very long sentences that all these mistakes happen. The shorter it is, keep it simple. So the another sen uh, example there is, having been thrown in the air, the dog caught the stick. So which was thrown in the air, the dog or the stick? So you have to say, having been thrown in the air, you should say the dog caught the stick that had been thrown in the air. So there is no confusion. So language is a very you know dicey thing. You have to be careful how you use things. Now there's one more activity. Can somebody tell me how to... Uh, the right can you unjumble the first or the second the two sentences there drugs invented one man of useful is penicillin most the uh, can I have some somebody in the chat or someone telling me what is the, the right uh, sentence
No, I'll give you the answer. Yes. The first one, uh, this, uh, first I'll go to this. Uh, covered in mud, Mark helped the puppy. This again is uh, incorrect. What should you say? Who was covered in mud? Yeah, somebody said, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll give you the answers to this. Yeah, this is one more example of, you know, if you don't put the comma in the right place. I like cooking, comma, my family, comma, and my pets. So if you don't put the comma, it looks like you're going to cook your family and your pets. Yeah, so it's, this is, some, you know, you can pin these funny things up in your, uh, in your classroom so that people know that if they don't use the comma, it sounds very weird. Looks like they're going to cook their family and their pets. This is the answer to that jumble sentences. And uh, why this statement is wrong. That is covered in mud, Mark helped the puppy. So covered in mud, the puppy was helped by Mark. Then though he is rich, but he is kind. The but you're supposed to say yet. So this is very, very small three-letter word, but it changes the meaning and uh, grammatically it is wrong. Now, step seven. Recognize patterns and reproduce. That is, once you have given them those activities, those stories and taught them what is a noun, what is a verb, what is adverb. Now, by now, then they should understand, like, you know, that language has got a structure, has got a pattern. But please do not teach them like there is SVO pattern, SVOC pattern and all that in the beginning itself. After they understand that language does have a pattern, then you tell them these are the patterns in English language and how it is different from their mother tongue. So they can always, you know, give examples of how in, in Tamil it is, we follow a different sentence structure, sentence pattern, and in English you follow a different sentence pattern. And how if you were to literally translate or transliterate or speak Tanglish, there is a lot of confusion and humor. So give a number of sentences and ask them to identify the error. They will probably know that there is something wrong, but they will not know why it's wrong. So that is where you step in and tell them. But make them read as much as possible on their own. So now I'll be giving you some sentences which you can see yourself. Yeah. The couple agreed during the family dinner, they would announce their engagement. So where is the focus? Are you saying that which is important? Is the family dinner important? or their engagement important. So you want to say that the couple agreed that during the family dinner, they would er announce their engagement. So you should stress on what is the part of it which is very important for you. Now errors. The best way to teach language would be to give them sentences with errors. And they, and they love it because students like to be in the, you know, the feet of the teacher. So when you give them something and tell, find what is wrong with it, they are very excited because for once they're doing the role of a teacher. So can I have the errors here? Can anyone identify the error in the first one? The company were founded in the year of 2000. What? Pardon? Was founded. I think that's what. Was founded in the year of 2000. Okay, good, good. Uh, each student must bring their umbrellas. Every student. Okay, every student must bring their umbrella, or each student must bring his or her umbrella. 
Uh, the next one, the trousers is missing. Are um, missing. Because it is a plural. So one must help his neighbors. Their, their neighbors. Okay. One must help his or her. So which laptop is kept on charging? Whose laptop? Whose laptop is kept on? Even on charging seems like a very uh, Indian English kind of word. It's kept, yeah, it's kept charged. Okay, unless you do not pay the fine, you will not be excused. You will be excused. No, it's a double negative, which may, which is confusing there. Unless. Unless you pay the fine, you will not be excused. So it will be unless you do not pay the fine, you will, you will be excused. Yeah. yeah. Can't be a double negative. Then it becomes a, the meaning is changed. Then the last one, mathematics are a difficult subject. It's a difficult subject. Yeah. Is what happens is uh, like that funny poem we started off with. When there is an S, no, you think it's a plural, and plurals have to have A R E R. So it's a it's a grammar rule which is being uh, changed here. Grammatically, this is correct, but this mathematics is not a plural word. So mathematics is a difficult subject, and it is very difficult for me. I for me too. So these were activities which we did for seven. Uh, now these are some uh, examples of some good English grammar books, especially if you want to you know they have a lot of activities. So you can note it down if you want. Uh, it's, it's, it's related to Indian students. So they will the examples will be something which you can identify with. And I've uh, personally used some of these books and they are they are very interesting and online you have a lot of grammar act, uh, activities grammar games and stuff but everyone does is not uh, permitted to bring their uh, you know mobiles to the classroom or, or everybody does not have a wi-fi facility so always a grammar book a textbook and a notebook and a pen is the best way of teaching English grammar. And not to forget our Ren and Mart, which was there from my school days till now, but it has had uh, its, uh, they've made it more like, you know, current. There's lots of activities added to it. So you should have on your, every English teacher should have, not only English teachers, every teacher who plans to take up teaching as a career should have a good dictionary and should have a good grammar book with, which they should refer to, you know, like the Bible, take it, read it all the time. So these are good websites to teach English grammar also. English practice, grammarmonster.com. Yeah, and there are some videos, YouTube videos also, where you can teach, uh, where you can teach English grammar. I've just let's put it there. There are more. I've just given one example. Yeah, now I'll just show you one of these grammar practices. Now what happens is, let me go back there. I'm trying to open a new tab.
Can you see my uh, screen? No, ma'am. It's your PPT only visible here. Okay, maybe I can't show another screen. Okay, fine. I'll just close it. You have to select that uh, tab, ma'am. While sharing, it will show some uh, different uh, windows. No, you have to select that uh, new tab and then give share. New share, new share. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I able to see? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Phrasal verbs? Yes, ma'am. Able yeah. to see. Yeah, this is what this is uh, in that one of the websites that I've shown, you know, English practice. Uh, there are a lot of free, uh, uh, you know, interactive uh, exercises. So they give you the option and they ask you to select whatever. And they give you the, uh, the answers also. So this is one way uh, you can, uh, you know, teach uh, grammar. And you don't have to search for the answers. They can assess themselves. Now, let's go back to that. Are we still, uh, are you still able to see what I, uh, my screen? Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yeah. That what are adjectives? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Scrolling so, now. Yeah. Yeah. So these are, uh, you know, they, this is a nice picture where they tell you grammar is a monster. Yeah. Like grammar is a buchandi kind of, no? but how, uh, with, you know, you have uh, easily confused words and then you have, uh, yeah. So you're able to, you know, immediately have a small test there. And it's so easy. See the first one ready for the test. Uh, I have been loyal to, to, I'm loyal to. So I select that. Uh, it is supposed to be a smooth moment. Don't think too much about it. So, and they tell you immediately. It is, it's a very elementary exercise, but they immediately tell you, oh, you're a genius. So what happens? You get all excited and you start working. So this is just, I wanted to show something which is very, very simple. So uh, this website, you can see it's free website and it's called Grammar Monster. So uh, yeah, I'll just get back to my other screen. Am I back on my original screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. So those are, uh, as you all saw, that grammarmonster.com is great fun and it teaches you, uh, you know, and it gives you uh, immediate uh, uh, feedback. And uh, most of the uh, stuff are not free. So when you find a free website, you should quickly make a note of it uh, so that you don't uh, you know, forget it next time. So those are the exercises we just worked on. And now I just want to give a recap of all the seven steps once again. First one was grammar is everywhere. You don't have to be searching for it. Take anything which is available and teach them. Step two is read and comprehend. We did a passage from an Indian Blackton storybook, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, step three, awareness of possibilities. So wherever and whenever you can teach some grammar aspect, just see uh, writing on the board, teaching a story. Step four, make a connection. That is, make it so that, you know, the, I'll just go back and show you what we did. Step four again. Yeah, step four was make a connection and then you ask them to write on the board their own story, okay? What were they doing? And then that you found out that that was to teach tenses. 
step five is we made it contextual. We asked them to write a paragraph of what they did in the classroom themselves. Step six was activate and create, where we said, you know, use any grammar activity, and from that you create your own grammar activity. Yeah. And step seven was to teach them patterns in language. So they recognize patterns and they reproduce. Okay. These are the grammar books, which I told you are very good. And the two websites that I told you, you can teach for uh, use for teaching grammar. Now you understood, I think by now you must have made out what are those seven steps. It starts with a G and an R and an A and M and an F and A and an R. So now you know what grammar is all about. The seven steps to make grammar interesting. Yeah, so now uh, I hope I have made some of you interested in teaching grammar and some of you, uh, uh, your mindset should have changed. So you don't think that grammar is uh, tough after all. Yeah, Jaffrin has asked, is it possible to post the links in the chat box, the grammar exercises? Uh, of course, I, I think I can do that. One minute, I'll just do that. Typed it here and see if I can send it. I don't know why it's not uh, working for me. Why is my chat box not working? Chat. I'm not able to put it in the chat box. Sorry. I think after uh, stop sharing your screen, you can able, I think. Okay, maybe then. I'll yeah. send it. Anyway, yeah. this uh, uh, PPT itself is there. If you want, I can mail it to Dr. Geeta and you can use it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, yeah. Fine. So uh, with that, I come to the end of my uh, uh, get, uh, lecture or interaction, whatever you call it. I hope I've made uh, uh, some change in your mindset. That was the main thing why I thought I would uh, speak to you. So if there's any, uh, I think I'll stop sharing so that we can. How do I stop sharing? You can see in top of your screen map. Oh, yeah. In red says... color, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. Fine. Yes. So I've stopped share. <laughs> Yes. If there's a, any questions from you, I wouldn't mind taking it. Any feedback? 
Dear students, if you have any queries, you can unmute your mic and speak to Ma'am. I hope you have made it clear, ma'am. That's why there is a question. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. Yeah. But I, uh, yes, but I hope you, uh, being a fresh students who are going to enter into the teaching profession, uh, have a passion for you know, teaching language. First of all, you should master it as much as possible. It's only when you are a master, no, you can go, when you stand in front of the class, uh, what happens is your confidence will rub off on your students. And you should say, hey, we've come to learn something. I'm learning from you. You're learning from me. I still learn a lot from my students. And, uh, and technology especially, you know, has made uh, the student and teacher on the same platform. So we are all learning together. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sparing your valuable time with us. Thank you so much. Ashila, yes, take over the session, ma'am. Roses are red, violets are blue. Incorrect grammar will never be cute. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful session. And thanks for the precious time spent with us and gave us deep insight that was inspiring. And it has been very useful for us. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would request Mrs. Barina to propose the vote of thanks. Yes. Thank you a small word. It's, thank you. It's a small word with a beautiful meaning. We deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the word of thanks on this memorable occasion. On behalf of the Faculty of Education, Dr. MGR Education and Research Institute, we would like to thank the management for providing us the wonderful opportunity to connect us virtually for the guest lecture on the most needed topic, Effective Methods on Teaching English Grammar. It is our great privilege to thank our chief guest, Dr. Usha Sadashivam, head department of English, Meenakshi College, Purimal, Chennai. Your words are really useful and make us to understand the minute mistakes we are doing in English language and how to teach English grammar with much fun. We are proud to have you here, ma'am. Thank you. Next, we would like to thank our honorable president, engineer, ACS Arun Kumar, sir, and provi for providing this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, sir. Here I mention our sense of gratitude to all the executives and head of Dr. MGR Education and Research Institute and our beloved principal, Dr. K. Kida Ma'am, for providing their valuable support in enriching the event. Thank you. Last but not least, express our heartfelt thanks to all the participants for making this event a great success. Thank you, Anandar. Thank you very much, Madam Usha, Madam. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you all. Lovely meeting you all. Bye. Thank you, dear students and faculty members. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for joining the session. Have a pleasant day. Thank you, ma'am.